down now. Okay, that bill passes. And uh, we have one more bill, one item bill. 35. Yes, item 35, AB 7, 2768, deals with Prop 47 and the petition deadline for extension. Um, interestingly enough, this is supported by my district attorney, so uh, I, it shows I'm not anti-district attorneys. That's good to have them here. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, no one would ever suggest that, no. Um, uh, today I stand before you with AB 2765, which assists counties, district attorneys, and local courts that are working together dutifully to comply with one of Prop 47's mandate. Uh, this bill has no opposition, and I'm grateful to the many members of law enforcement community that support of this bill, including the Police Chiefs Association, the San Diego District Attorney Bonnie DeManis, who's a co-sponsor of this bill, the LA District Attorney Jackie Lacey, and Alameda County DA Nancy O'Malley. The LA County Board of Supervisors is also a co-sponsor, and CSAC, and a number of other county boards. Currently, the courts, uh, public defendants, and district attorneys processing record changes for eligible individuals with Prop 47 offenses use a streamlined administrative process to complete the task of making these administrative changes. Under the ballot measure, petitions filed as early as next year will require a hearing by the court before they can be approved, a costly and time-consuming process that has the potential to bring court processes to a standstill. In the San Diego County, our DA estimates that there will be nearly 200,000 records left to process. In LA County, that estimate stands at more than 800,000 eligible records. This bill will protect local go uh, government resources and allow for greater local control and management of court functions in light of the demands facing them. In essence, AB uh, 27, in the absence of AB 2765, district attorneys supporting this bill anticipate that they will receive thousands of these filings per week as public defenders race to limit the number of court proceedings that would be required in the absence of this bill by filing as many petitions as possible in advance. Specifically, this bill will prevent that sort of mass filing situation from blocking up our courts by extending the administrative process for five years as proposed under this bill. AB 2765, as I pointed out, is sponsored by a number of stakeholders in law enforcement. Uh, and to testify today, we have with us Chief Deputy Dave Greenberg from the San Diego District Attorney's Office and the LA County uh, Public Defender Ron Brown. Uh, I will give them an opportunity, uh, any of them at this time, to speak. Good morning. Well, oh. Let me just say, this bill has no known opposition and support on both sides. Okay, we can Please be, brief. be very brief. Yes. Good morning, uh, uh, Chairman and Senate members. Um, in a nutshell, I think this is the, a very good idea because it's going to allow the people that have to file petitions to properly evaluate the petitions to see if they should be brought forward or not. Um, in San Diego, we've taken care of anybody who's serving a sentence, so now we're just talking about people with convictions going back to even the, the 60s. So in light of what you've asked, you. I will limit it to that. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair. Members, my name is Ron Brown. I'm the public defender of LA County. I've been a public defender for 35 years. In that uh, time period, I've never seen this kind of support. We have over 800,000 cases in the county. 556,000 will be handled by my, my office. As the author has said, if this does not pass, it will simply shut down the court system in Los Angeles County. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> John Bowders, Californians for Safety and Justice, co sponsor and support. Thank you. Others in support? Madam Chair, members, Dan Filizzato on behalf of the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office in support. Uh, good morning, Elizabeth Espinosa on behalf of the board of, Boards of Supervisors in Santa Cruz and Santa Clara Counties in support. Thank you. Michelle Thomas-Shaw representing Alameda County District Attorney Nancy O'Malley in support. Catherine Brandenburg representing Alameda County Board of Supervisors in support. Andrew Langley on behalf of the County of San Diego in support. Thank you. Sarah Linder on behalf of the National Association of Social Workers, California chapter, in support. Stanisha Boatner on behalf of the California State Association of Counties, in support. Thank you. Good morning, Grace Childs with the Urban Counties of California, in support. Micah Doktoroff on behalf of the ACLU of California, in support. Good morning, Amanda Wells on behalf of the Judicial Council, in support. Thank you. Others in support? Seeing and hearing none, questions or comments from members of the committee, or is there a motion? Madam Chair, as I move the bill, if I could just make a very yeah. brief comment, and that is for all the reasons 
we've heard to support this bill, the operations of the court, the backlog. Though we may have had some disagreements among us on the Prop 47 itself, one of the most, I think, impactful, beneficially impactful components of it was that it does allow, doesn't guarantee anyone, but it does allow those who had been convicted of the Prop 47 crimes as a felony to be able to potentially have that felony reduced to a misdemeanor. That is good public policy, and we want as many people as possible to be able to benefit from it, and it could be upwards of a million people in California, because if we're talking about safest communities, the very thing that keeps someone from reoffending is access to housing, employment, and education. And with a felony on your record, you cannot even live with your mother if she's getting public assistance for her housing. You'll never get a Cal grant or a Pell grant. You're not going to see any higher education. And you're never going to get a job that pays more than minimum wage. We can help people who don't deserve to have that felony on their back for a lifetime. It's a lifetime punishment for a crime committed decades ago in many cases that's no longer considered a felony. This is good public policy to keep our community safer. Thank you. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> uh, would you like to close? Uh, I think uh, Senator Leno made my close for me. I respectfully ask for your eye vote. <laughs> Please read the roll. Hancock? Aye. Hancock, aye. Anderson? Aye. Anderson, aye. Le Glazer? Aye. Glazer, aye. Leno? Aye. Leno, aye. Lou? Aye. Lou, aye. Monning? Aye. Monning, aye. Stone? Aye. Stone, aye. That bill passes. Thank you. Senator Anderson? Uh, it's uh, item 34. Item 34. Assembly member Chazian, uh, please present number 34, AB 2687. Thank you. I'm here today to present AB 2687, which amends current statute of, to require all passengers for higher vehicles such as Uber, Lyft, and taxi cabs to follow the same blood alcohol content guidelines as commercial drivers. Current law requires commercial drivers to have a BAC of less than 0 0.04. However, passengers for higher vehicles drivers may have a BAC of less than 0 0.08. This does, not, this does not make sense because commercial drivers are hauling letters and passengers for higher vehicles are holding friends and family. Lowering BBAC level to 0 .04 passenger, for passengers for higher vehicles will ensure the safety of passengers as well as other vehicles on the road. With rapidly evolving technology, including how we transport people, ensuring these passengers for higher vehicles have the same standards as commercial drivers is very important. With me today, I have Sean Hoffman with the California District Attorney's Association to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Morning, Mr. Chair and members. Sean Hoffman with the California District Attorneys Association. We're the sponsors of uh, AB 2687. Uh, as, as the author noted, I think this is a, a common sense measure to uh, enhance consumer protection, public safety, uh, with the you know, frequency with which we encourage the use of taxis and ride sharing companies, <coughs> excuse me, um, as an alternative to drinking and driving. I think it makes sense that we hold those drivers themselves more accountable than we hold uh, you know, the average person. Someone who's holding themselves out, out as a commercial carrier um, or, or kind of a quasi-commercial carrier, I guess, in this in this situation, uh, we think it's it's appropriate to have that reflected in the lower blood alcohol content. Uh, for those reasons, we ask for your support. Thank you. Other witnesses in support? Mr. Chair, members, Dan Filizzato on behalf of the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office uh, for the exact reasons stated by my colleague, the LADA is in support. Do we have other witnesses in support? Jorge Castillo on behalf of the California Alcohol Policy Alliance, the Los Angeles Drug and Alcohol Policy Alliance and Alcohol Justice in full support of AB 2687. Thank you. Do we have witnesses in opposition? Members, do you have any questions or a motion? I move the bill. Thank you. Uh, Assemblyman, would you like to close? Respectfully ask for I want. Thank you. If we is this uh, where is this headed to? Uh, probes. So uh, this is due pass to a probes. May we have a, a roll call? Hancock. 
Anderson? Aye. Anderson, aye. Glazer? Aye. Glazer, aye. Leno? Aye. Leno, aye. Lou? Aye. Lou, aye. Monning? Aye. Monning, aye. Stone? Stone, aye. We're going to put that in call to allow other members to add on. Thank you, sir. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, members. Okay. Assembly member Lowe, would you come and uh, present item number 33, AB 2611? And I understand you have two items today. Thank you very much, Senator and members. Um, please present Assembly Bill 2611, which will prohibit the disclosure of a visual or audio recording of a death of a peace officer killed in line of duty without the consent of the peace officer's immediate family. Uh, this ensures privacy and um, transparency for uh, the public interest and I respectfully ask for your I vote. Uh, witnesses in support. Mr. Chairman, members, Randy Perry with Aaron Reed and Associates on behalf of the California Association of Highway Patrolmen and PORAC uh, sponsors the bill. I just want to let you know that this bill started out as a bill to protect witnesses and victims, both their safety and their privacy. The bill was to, because of the body cam issue, uh, we roll up on domestic violence situations, on sexual assault situations, and what we were trying to do in the original bill was to say that those are not subject to release. A piece of that language also said that um, any video depicting great bodily injury or death of any person was not subject to, to, uh, to release. They're still subject to the defense situation. They, they have the pitches system. They can still be used in evidence. The whole bit. This was just that somebody couldn't just go in and file and put it up on the internet or do with it whatever they wanted. The opposition has remained opposed to this bill from day one all the way through. We keep amending the bill. We had to amend out the witnesses and the victims protections and privacies. Um, and then th the last opposition was based on the release of any of the video for any person being killed. So we amended the bill to peace officers killed in the line of duty. So their families of these officers who are killed an average of 10 to 13 a year in California won't have to view these videos up on the internet. In the last committee, there was a question about why this only applies to peace officers and not everyone. I submit to you the bill did include everyone and the opposition fought the bill and we amended it only to law enforcement. That's how we've gotten to where we are. I would gladly, gladly amend this bill to include everyone in all videos depicting death of any person. Um, and we've tried that, and we've had to amend all those out. So I just wanted to let you know how we got to where the bill only deals with the murder of a peace officer while on duty now. Thank you. Do you have other witnesses in support? Thank you, Mr. Chair and Senators. Matt Cyberling on behalf of the Association for Los Angeles Deputy Sheriffs, the Los Angeles Police Protective League, and the Riverside Sheriffs Association all in support. Thank you. Do you have witnesses in opposition? Mr. Chair, members, Jimmy Wirt for the California Newspaper Publishers Association. Um, in, the, in the relatively few instances where um, an officer is going to be depicted and, and killed in the line of duty in one of these body cam uh, films or footages, um, we think that current law currently protects um, the privacy interests of the survivors of the officer. Um, it has worked well so far, and um, to place in the hands of a grieving family um, the tremendous weight of weighing a potential public interest in the disclosure of that video, and we acknowledge that's going to happen very rarely, but in some instances that could be a public interest. There could be a public interest in seeing how the officer actually um, was killed. Um, under current law, it allows um, an agency to um, redact or segregate disclosable information from non-disclosable information. 
This bill does not provide for that. It's an all or nothing <coughs> proposal. And a vote for this bill today would um, essentially deny any public access to this footage because at no time will a grieving family ever um, give its consent. Also, with respect to Mr. Perry's testimony, that this would still be information available pursuant to a pitches motion. Under the Public Records Act right now, a requester simply asks an agency for information, and the agency responds either by providing the information or denying it. But under a pitches motion, there has to be litigation. The, the member of the public actually has to file a lawsuit in order to get to the point where that motion could be made. We don't think that that's a good way to go. And for all of these reasons, we urge a no vote on this bill. Thank you. Other witnesses in opposition? Good morning, Mr. Chair and members. Kevin Baker for the American Civil Liberties Union of California. We appreciate that these may be um, sensitive materials that family members may prefer not to disclose, but we see no justification for creating a special rule for law enforcement officers that doesn't apply to firefighters, doctors, nurses, utility workers, custodians, public officials, or anybody else. There, as my colleague for the newspaper has indicated, there may be circumstances where there is a public interest in uh, re revealing the circumstances in which a police officer died. We entrust our officers with great responsibility, but um, with that responsibility, we also need transparency. There may be circumstances in where there's misconduct. Um, or the officer may be the victim of a crime where we need to know sort of information about the circumstances. So we believe that there, um, the existing rules are sufficiently protective to weigh that balance of privacy and public interest. Um, and we would um, ask for a no vote today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, members, any questions? The bill's been moved. Would you like to close? Thank you very much, uh, Senators. Um, I wanted just to reiterate the point that actually in agreement with the uh, opposition and would be gladly take that amendment, but it was something that we took in Senate Judiciary. Um, happy to work with uh, all stakeholders alike and with respectfully ask for your support. With that, this, I'm sorry. Uh, could I ask Mr. Ewer a question, please? Uh, it's highly unusual after the close, but for you, Senator Leto. Thank you. <laughs> you were moving very efficiently. I appreciate that, but I thank you also for the allowance and uh, offer. So the suggestion has been made that existing rules are sufficiently protective and that you had walked us through how a request is made. And I w was going to ask before you said that it's the agency itself, so we're talking, when you say agency, we're talking about a police department. Yes. It can make the determination under current law yes. that there is greater risk to the family or to the survivors than there is benefit to the public, and that that information will not be revealed. You say redacted. In this case, it would be part of a video. So it's not a court. It's not some third party. It's the police department itself gets to make that under current law. That is correct. So, Mr. Chair, I understand the very great sensitivity to this. I had voted for this in judiciary just so the assemblyman could have another opportunity to be able to make his case. Uh, but I had stated that at the time. Uh, as many of my colleagues know, uh, I've been working for some years for greater transparency, uh, working in a bipartisan matter to merely allow public access to not personnel files, but investigative files when those investigations determine that there has been officer misconduct. These are not just allegations. And again, these are internal investigations. And unfortunately, the opposition worked so hard that Bill didn't even get an opportunity to have a debate on the floor. So unfortunately, I cannot vote for less transparency when there's such adamacy to even a little transparency for confirmed cases of officer misconduct. And the reason I get as impassioned about this as I do is I am convinced that the trust that has been so frayed because of all that has been revealed recently and the scandals in Oakland and San Francisco and Los Angeles Sheriff's Department and San Diego from sexual misproprieties to misuse of force, 
We have to rebuild that trust. And by creating more secrecy, I believe is the wrong way to go. So I won't be able to support the bill today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you closed already, correct? So this is uh, AB 2611, do pass to approves. If you'd like to take the roll call, that'd be nice. Hancock? Anderson? Aye. Anderson, aye. Glazer? Leno? No. Leno, no. Lou? Monning? Stone? Stone, aye.